Caitlin here from CSS Wellness with your core and restore. You're probably thinking, girl, it's been a while. Yes, it has. I took a week off for vacation. I'm back, ready to come back at it. Got tested for the Rona, came back negative for the Rona, so I'm good to go. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get right into it. So go ahead and grab your mat. That's all you're gonna need for class today. Um, this is Corn Resource, so we're going to do some yoga posing, getting in some, to some deep stretches. I know I need it after this vacation. Um, and then we'll get into a little bit of ab work, abdominal core work as well. So here we go. I want you to go ahead and sit on your mat. And as always, I really love to start with the breathing at, at first because it helps to stretch your intercostal muscles. It helps to get into those core muscles and help stretch those out. And we focus on breathing in a way that we actually should be breathing throughout the day. Uh, stress has a tendency to disrupt the proper way of breathing and we end up taking shallow breaths that are only in the chest. And we actually wanna send that breath all the way down to your gut. So let's go ahead and get after it. Go ahead and take a seat with me here. I also invite you to gently close your eyes. Good. And sit up nice and tall. Might as well work on our posture while we're here, right? And from here, I want you to take a nice deep inhale through your nose. Send your breath all the way down to your belly. Feel that belly expand. I want you to pause for just a moment, holding that breath there. And then I want you to exhale through the nose, feeling the belly deflate. If you wanna be loud with your breathing, be loud. You don't have anyone next to you. It is a little cathartic to do so. Once you've gotten the rhythm of your breathing down, we should, we, should, we should be there. Go ahead and just take 10 breaths on your own. Awesome job. From here, I'll have you gently open your eyes. Let's roll the shoulders up and back away from the ears. I want you to take note. If you noticed any areas in your body during the breathing that felt a little tight, maybe you're feeling some tightness in your hips. Maybe you're feeling some tightness in your shoulders and your neck. Just take note of those areas and just really focus on through our practice releasing those areas. Whew. And hopefully you're feeling nice and ready. And we're just going to ease into this. I'm going to have you bring your right ear to your right shoulder. Get a nice neck stretch. 
I know a lot of us are at our desk recently. Go ahead and bring your chin to your chest. On the flight, I did nothing but crossword puzzles on the way down and on the way back up. So I know that my back and my neck is a little fatigued from putting my head in that position. Left ear, left shoulder. Let's bring the chin to the ceiling. And this one feels really good. Stretching the front here. And left ear, left shoulder again. We're gonna take it back the opposite direction. Chin to chest. Right ear, right shoulder. And roll back, chin to ceiling. Ooh, this one specifically gets really tight when you have your face in your computer or your phone looking down constantly at something. I try to situate myself at my own personal desk to sit level with the computer instead of being above the screen and having to look down. It tends to help a lot. Okay, I also do a lot of floor sitting with my laptop and set it up a little higher. It tends to help. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get into the shoulders one more time, rolling them back. Just kind of alternating, rolling them forward. Big arm circles. Wow, this feels really good in the shoulders. Let's get one more. Good. Plant that right hand to the outside of the right hip. We bring that left arm up next to the ear. We reach up and over out of that left hip to the right side. Plant that left hand to the outside of the left hip. We bring that right arm up next to the ear. We reach up and over out of that right hip. I'm being a little traumatic in the way that I'm doing it, but I want you to be able to see the up and over out of the hip. And relax that arm down. And from here, we're going to roll over into our tabletop position. There's little kitty nails in my mat here. He thinks it's his mat. He has commandeered my mat for himself. He thinks it's his new scratch pad. Driving me nuts. Okay, so from here we're going to move into a cat-cow position. So I want you to press the hands into the mat. Okay, so you're separating the shoulder blades, tucking the hips under. Bringing the chin to the chest for cat. We release down, bringing the shoulder blades together, flaring the hips up nice and tall. We're here for cow. Good. And from here, we tuck the hips under, press the hands into the mat, tuck the chin, we have cat. And down for cow. Let's take the sequence four more times for a total of six. Up for cat. Down for cow. Up for cat. Down for cow. Up for cat. Down for cow. One for three, two, one. Sink down for cow. Find your positioning and sink down for three, two, one, and relax back to a neutral spine. From here, we're just gonna have you take some hip circles. Good, take it back. 
back the other direction. <clears throat> Actually, I need to work on opening my own hips. I took a misstep off the patio two days ago and was almost devastating. But from here, we're going to turn the fingertips back and gently slide our hips back. Of course, with all the work that I do, I know that having off kilter hips is only a matter of time before you have something devastating happen to the body that affects your chain. Whether it's just over repetitive use, good, go ahead and flip the hands back. Bring the toes together behind you, separate the knees, mat width, send the hips back and stretch the arms out in front of you. Good, we're here for child's pose. I want you to take five breaths right here. Anyway, when your hips are off, it's only a matter of time before repetitive motion creates an issue or you do something silly like take a misstep off the patio. So I just about sprained my ankle. I just bruised it pretty good. My left side, which is <laughs> My more dominant side when it comes to my legs and my hips. Felt it all the way up my knee, all the way up to my hip. Good. From here, we're going to have you walk your hands to the left side of the body. And I know that I've had these issues with my hips for months. And do you think I worked on it every day to try to fix it? I have not. <laughs> So, I'm going to have to fix this. Walk your hands over to your right side. Good and relax here. And from here, we walk the hands back center. We pull ourselves back up to our tabletop position. From here, I'm going to have you tuck the toes under. We light up the knees. We send the hips up and back. Biceps bring the ears, and we find our first down dog position. Good. Let's just hold here for a second. What I want you to do is evenly distribute the weight and the balls of your toes. If you're like me, you're still not really heels to the ground yet, but that's okay because we continually work on this and we'll get there eventually. Good. And your yoga practice isn't necessarily about flexibility, but the way you move and making sure that you have proper movement. So evenly distribute your weight between the balls of your toes. So you, I don't want you to shift your weight to the outside of your feet or to the inside of the feet. I want it nice and evenly distributed. Really focus on this distribu distribution of weight. Then from here, I'm going to have you pedal the feet down one at a time. That evenly distributed weight. Good, and just stretch through the calves. Good. Good, and then relax here. Good, we're going to come sit it right back down, tabletop position. Good, and from here I'm going to come into a puppy dog pose. So what you do is you keep the hips stacked over the knees. Walk your hands out in front of you. You can bring your chin to the mat. And we'll hold here for five breaths. If you can, cue back into that deep belly breathing. From here, I'm going to have you walk the hands back to that 
tabletop position. Good. From here, we're just going to cat cow up the top of the back, the mid back here. So we're going to leave the hips alone. The hips can stay stationary. And from here, we're going to press the hands down. Sink the hands down. Flare that head up nice and tall. Press the hands. Separate the shoulder blades. And sink. Now press. And sink. Two more. Press. And sink. Awesome job. Whew. Great. Let's take a couple of head circles just right here. Two. We'll take a third. And I want you to take it back the opposite direction. One. Two. And three. Good. And from here, you're like, God, girl, you kept keep keeping me in tabletop position. Well, I'm about to make it a little bit harder for you. We're going to separate the knees as far as your body will allow on your mat. You can double up the mat underneath your knees if you need a little extra cushioning for comfort. I want you to turn the toes out like this, okay? And keep the arches of your feet nice and flat on your mat. And we're going to just come down here. Nice flat back into kind of a frog position here. I'm just going to have you take 10 breaths here, opening up those hips. Some of us probably really feel this at our hips, or others of us probably really feel this at the low back. And either it is correct muscle that we are stretching, your psoas major connects from your inner thigh to your low back. So, so maybe some of us feel it in both places. So from here, we're gonna now massage our psoas major. <laughs> and you're like, well, that's awkward. Well, we're going to do it uh, hands-free, and I'm going to have you pull forward, okay, and then press back. And that's going to gently massage that muscle. Good. The surrounding tissue, we're kind of stretching it a little bit further, gently, kind of coaxing it, telling it, hey, it's okay. Open up a little further, release that tightness that you've been holding on to. And this is a big one for stress too. This one gets really tight when you're stressed. And occasionally what happens when you release a muscle that's related to stress or it's tight because of that, when you release it, you'll get this wave of emotion that kind of comes and it's not for every, yeah, it doesn't happen to everybody, but it happens to some people. So if you've ever been in a yoga class, a really, really good one, and it's become really emotional. A lot of times you're releasing emotions out of your muscles. There's a psychological effect that happens as well. And it's so good for you. You're taking care of your body. You're showing yourself some love. You're allowing your body some grace. You're putting you first in the moment. So let's 
hips are a big one for holding emotions. Good, let's go for another three, two, and one. All right, let's prop ourselves back up onto our hands. We'll walk our legs in. Good. Coming back to that tabletop position, you can rotate back from your mat if you happen to face the same direction I did for that one. Good, from here we tuck the toes and we send the hips up and back for another down dog. Good, remember when we come to this one, we wanna focus on evenly distributing the weight between the toes. The hands as well, I didn't touch on that one earlier, but do it through the hands as well. Really grip your mat with your toes, grip your mat with your finger pads. It's going to help. And you send the hips up and back. I want you to hold here just a moment so you can get the feelings right. Good. And I want you to try to settle the heels down to your mat. Breathe through it. I feel this one all the way to the top of my glutes, into my tailbone, a really tight tailbone and sacrum area. I think it's probably from a little trauma that I had when I was 12. I fell on a metal bathroom around my tailbone. They refused to x-ray it, but I'm pretty sure it was broken. <laughs> Good. And from here, we're gonna pull ourselves forward. Okay, I want you to find that forward position. Lock your hands out if you need to, adjust. And we come to a high plank. We hold here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. From here, I want you to come down onto your forearms like your sphinx. Tap the hips under, squeeze the glutes. And we hold here in low plank for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Relax the knees down. Press yourself back up, tabletop position. Yes, again. And from here, I'm going to have you needle the right arm through. Coming down to kind of that half puppy dog pose. We're adding in that twist. Walking the left arm over the left ear. Outstretched in front of us. Breathe here. Go ahead and walk that left hand back. Gently press yourself back up. Make sure you have plenty of room. It's more of a note for myself. Needle the left arm through. Coming down to that puppy dog pose with a twist. Right arm extends overhead. And we hold here for five breaths. Good, pressing ourselves back up. Tabletop position. Good, and from here I'm gonna have you tuck the toes, right up the knees and the hips up and back. Here we are again, down dog. Make sure you're breathing. Make note of the toes and the finger pads and your evenly distributed weight between your feet. Good, pull forward, high plank. Lock your hands out if you need to. Tuck your hips under, hold here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 
and one, bring it down to the forearms. Hold here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Gently bring the knees down. We're gonna walk the hands all the way up this time. Let's roll up the spine. Whoo, we're in kneeling position. Let's roll the shoulders back one at a time. Here we go, guys. From here, I'm gonna bring that right leg forward. We're coming to a half kneeling. Right leg forward. We tuck the left hip under. So this is not tucked, this is tucked. And what I want you to do with the shoulders, whoo, my balance is a little off today. With the shoulders, instead of coming here, which may feel like a normal posture for you. Focus on sitting up nice and tall, shoulders back, chin up, and we're here. You should feel a little bit of a stretch here. I'm anticipating. Let's hold here for five breaths. left arm next to the left ear. We reach up and out of that left hip again to the right side. And we hold here for three breaths. And we bring it back upright. We pull ourselves forward using the hamstring. Pull back using the hip flexor. Forward hamstring. Back hip flexor, keeping the hips tucked under. Forward. And back. Good, from here our hands frame that right leg. We extend that left leg back behind us. Good. And from here, we take a nice gentle twist, opening out to our right side. And then we drop that right hand inside the right knee, or right foot, rather, sorry. Drop that left knee down. Good. Reach the hip forward. And hold here for three breaths. And from here, we shift our weight back, extending that right leg in front of us. And we bring our nose to our knee as best as possible. Trying to shift the weight back in the hips nice and evenly. And then pull it back. Good. From here, right foot comes back to meet the left leg. <laughs> yes, you're back on a tabletop, but you're not staying here. Walk the hands back. Roll the spine back to the top. Good, and let's go ahead and take that second side. So we send that left leg forward. Okay, we're in a half kneeling position. We tuck that right hip under. We're nice and tall in that hip. Posture is good, we want great posture. Okay, and from here we take five breaths. Right hand 
comes up next to the right ear. We reach up and over out of that right hip to the left side. And we relax it back down. And from here we pull ourselves forward using that left hamstring. And we pull back using that right hip flexor. Good, keeping that right hip tucked under the whole time. One, and two. Now let's get one, two more. Two more, pulling ourselves forward, pulling back. Good, last time here. Pulling forward, and pulling back. Good, hands frame that left foot. Right knee comes up. From here, we take a gentle twist to our left side. We hold here for a few breaths. And we release that left hand down to the inside of the left foot. Good, we bring that right knee down. We pull our hips forward. Get that nice good stretch and we take a few breaths here. Perfect. From here we shift the weight back, extending that left leg. Good. I'm trying to shift the hips back nice and evenly. Trying to bring your nose to your knee. Let me take a few breaths here. All right. Bring that left leg back to meet the right. We're back in our tabletop position. From here, I want you to light up, or sorry, tuck the toes. Light up the knees, don't send the hips. We're just coming here for a high plank. Holding for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Down your forearms here for 10, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, and one. And relax it down. Woo! And come to a child's pose if needed. Take a couple breaths. And from here, I want you to find a spot on your wall. I want you to sit in a fetal position against your wall here. And then you're going to kick your legs up. Bring your glutes in as close to the wall as you can. We're going to separate the feet to a V, okay? And that's really to just give yourself some space to reach up into the wall for these crunches that I'm getting ready to have you do. All right, guys, we'll probably finish out here on the wall, I'd say. Here we go. So, again, what we have next, reaching up, touching the wall, bringing it back down. We're going to take 20 of these in three, two, one, one, two, Three, 
17, 18, 19, and 20. Good. From here, slide the heels down. Pressing the feet into the wall. Good. This is a bit of a wall squat. Kind of help open that tailbone and sacrum area. Pressing the feet into the wall nice and actively. Taking a few breaths here. Take one more. And from here, we extend the leg up the wall. And this time we're gonna reach for our toes. So we're reaching up in this direction. It's okay if you don't make it. And then typically you do the toe thing and they're a little bit more back here, which is an easier touch. So this one's a little bit harder of a variation, even though that you have stability from the wall. We have 20 of these. Here we go in three, two, and one. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19 and 20. Good, and relax it down. You can bring your arms out to a T if you'd like. Slide the heels back down the wall. We're gonna come back to that wall squat. Taking a few breaths here. to your right, look to your left, and just relax. Good, go ahead and extend the leg back up the wall. Do one more thing for our inner thighs and low back. Maybe separate the feet down the wall, let them just kind of slide down. And I'm going to have you let gravity kind of take over here. So we're going to hold this position for about 10 breaths. If your legs start to slide down the wall, it's totally okay. job. You can choose to stay here. If you want kind of more of a deeper stretch, you just feel like it wasn't enough time, you're liking the benefits that you're feeling. Or you can slide your feet back together up the wall, bend the knees, and slowly roll over to a fetal position. Either way, we're 
moving into our meditation portion. So you can stay here or you can come to your mat for the word is escaping me right now. Savasana. <laughs> wow. Oh, a week off. Man, it's fried my brain. Anyway. Wherever you choose to be, I want you to have your arms out either by your side, palms facing up, or one hand to your belly and one hand to heart center. I invite you to gently close your eyes. Cue back into your breathing. And all of those little body parts we made note of at the very beginning of class. I want you to cue back into those areas and see how they feel now. Do they need a little more extra attention? A little more love? Are they feeling pretty good? Are they feeling better than when we started? Just keep breathing here. And after you've made note of those areas, focus on sending your breath there. If you still have some sticky spots, some areas that need a little love, show it some love by directing your breath there. I want you to imagine that with every inhale, the air goes down to the belly, swirls, and then goes to the area that you're having issues with and swirls around that area as well. Just visualize that. And from here, I want you to think of one way that you can have a good day today. It would be one thing that you could do. Whether it's cook yourself a healthy meal or Go for a walk later in your neighborhood. Watch your favorite movie. Treat yourself to a glass of wine or a bowl bath. Just think of that one thing that you can do today that would make today a good day because you showed yourself a little extra love and attention. to your left or right side to a fetal position. And I want you to take your time, gently prop yourself back up so that you don't have a head rush. Take a second here in the seated position. Thank you guys for joining me for another Corona Restore class. I feel pretty refreshed and happy to be back. I hope you guys are kind of feeling the same thing, or you at least have some time to yourselves to get that refreshed feeling back. Thank you, and namaste.